Welcome back, Keepers of the Flame. Capricorn! I think you're the only one that I haven't done yet. Oh, don't worry. I feel like I did Earth signs, but I think I missed you. Sorry. I did that black deck reading for the, <laughs> for the transits. Because Pluto just left your sign and went into Aquarius. And then, what was the other one? Saturn, your ruler, went into Pisces. So you are probably feeling fan freaking fabulous right now. How spring straighten you, Cappy? What does Capricorn need to know about their garden? What should they plant? Or ingest or whatever. What medicine does Capricorn need? Nothing. <laughs> This planetary adjustment was just fine, Hinks. What do we have? Gratitude, pink rose. Oh. And divination, chives. Hey. Ooh, that's the chives are scorpions. Hey, hey. And this is Gemini. Hmm. So, most roses you can eat if they haven't been treated with, like, gross, nasty chemicals. Hmm. It's like a little ring, like a little... So the crown, right? I can't really tell what kind of flower that is, so. There's probably some tradition out there of making crowns with something. I don't know, Gabby. You're going to have to interpret that one. I'm trying to think of geraniums have that type of cluster. Hydrangeas. Valerian. Joe Pie, I mean that's more. Uh, oh yeah, Joe Pie's kind of round, but that's that's she smells me. Uh, flax, kind of, but that's more more of a dome than a round ball shape. Interesting, Capricorn. I'm intrigued. Roses are obviously the universal symbol of love. <clears throat> This looks like a tea rose almost with all those petals in there. So abundance, an abundance of love. One of those lovely blooms you just want to bury your face in and take a deep breath. Then chives, I love chives. I have four bushes growing, but they're garlic chives. Ooh, they're growing in my yard. So then like all year, I'm just... <clears throat> Go figure. Scorpionic. I'm not sure. <clears throat> so the thing about chives is like the stem is how there's space in the stem.
and they kind of form like a mound and then get all those little blooms on them. And they open up and they look like a, like um, not a honeysuckle. I don't know why they call it, call those bushes honeysuckle because like cloves, they look like a clove. But like cloves, like if you've seen like the purple ones, the really big ones, like you can pluck those little petals off and there's like nectar at the bottom of them. They're delicious. But that's, you can't do that with these. these <laughs> this is different. That's not going to taste very good. Um, interesting though. Thirty-six and fourteen. If you're into the numbers thing, I'm trying to figure out why why this is a divination plant. I mean, unless it's the hollowness of the the chive, like creating that portal for you to see all the way through to the end. That's very scorpionic, right? So maybe that's something you um, put in your diet. Um, if you're not up for eating roses, they don't taste bad. You can you can use rose essence too. I just gave a, there was one other card that came through. I think it was for violets. No. Pansies. They're in the same family, but they just they just look very different. Um, that you set a bowl of sun lit water out. So we're in a sunny spot on an obtruse by sunlight for about six hours with rose or the rose petals in it. And then you can either drink the water, but if it's been treated or you get it from, um, like a cut flower place, those are heavily treated plants so you don't want to drink the water but you can use it like to freshen up the room if you want put it in a spray bottle for that if you're not going to use it right away though use distilled water otherwise it's going to get nasty and keep it out of the sunlight after you put it in the bottle but this feels like This feels like the, the rose petal part is the gateway into the divination for you. Most people it is. Like you don't really get to a divination, wanting to do divinations without some peace and love in your heart. Because you're in order to do divination, there has to be a certain amount of peace. There has to be a certain amount of calmness. And it, it's something that you you seek by kind of usually by default you're like that's it I've had enough give me my peace and I want some love and I want this and that and the other thing and then then the divination automatically steps in and the purest form of love is gratitude that's the purest form of love is gratitude okay so hmm, putting yourself in that state being more grateful for what you have and spreading what you can. That's and being grateful for what you have and then taking where you do have access and spreading that where you can, where your gifts are, which now is in divination according to these cards. Okay. There's somebody outside listening to the radio. What is fairy wisdom? What Capricorn to know? The Dormouse. <laughs> you are the gatekeeper, Capricorn. You are the. Uh, you are like Saint Peter at the gates. <laughs> you keep. You keep the. Um, um,
I don't want to say bad thoughts. You keep the the uninvested out. You keep the uninvested out. That's the most important role there ever was, right? That's why I think that's why the devil was created. It's just that is to keep people that weren't really invested out of paradise, heaven, whatever you want. But that's so weird because like Paradise is just another word for gardening, by the way. Hence why when we think of paradise, there's tropical things all the way around and yada, yada, yada. Ceremony, invocation, Capricorn. He has some work to do, child. But he will fail. I'll let you look at it. Bye, bitch. All right. Let's read. Oh. Sorry, Capricorn, I took attraction out of the deck. You don't need that cut though, right? You already do. Right. Pink rose. Ready, set, grow. I've always felt that having a garden is like having a good and loyal friend. CZ guest said that. There is no reason to be thankful and help is there there is reason to be thankful and help is on the way to balance energies. Pink roses will show you that you will show you that always there are all ways and ways to happiness that are opening for you and there will be a reason to be joyful. Sometimes something of value is in a focus at present. This could be an exchange of a gift, a windfall, or a sale of a large item, or simply discussion around it. Be careful that you do not interfere when you are not welcome and be wary of legal deception. Interesting. Cultivation. Roses are best planted while bare-rooted during their dormant stage between late autumn and late winter. They need full sun position and prefer loomy soil with a clay substructure and will grow in sandy soil if it's improved with plenty of organic matter. Water heavily as required in the growing season rather than often and lightly to encourage strong deep roots. Vase life is between 20 days, five and 20 days, depending on the variety or the cultivar. The magical correspondence include uses are joy, admiration, sympathy, sweetness, gentleness. Deities are Chloris, Flora, Adonis, Aurora, Cupid, Venus, Aphrodite, Eros, Horus, and Demeter. Celestial is Venus, and the astrological sign is Gemini. Gratitude spell. This spell, after another magical working, has been successful. Find a beautiful tree somewhere, lovely, and tie nine fresh pink roses with pink ribbon to the branches around the tree. Say, I give you these roses to share with the earth and with thanks and love. Interesting. So possibly you might have already had something come to fruition that you put into play and now you can go do that or um, another way you can do that is rose petals are good compost. You can just sprinkle the rose petals somewhere if you don't want to tie a ribbon. I usually don't like, I mean, like, unless it's biodegradable ribbon, which really, I've, I have difficult times finding it. So, um, rose petals are great compost, so you can sprinkle them, like, in, just on the earth, wherever, or in your garden, or wherever. So, just, just a, a little alternative. Um, 14... Chives. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. Audrey Hepburn. 
You are the master of your own free will, aligned with the divine, and the present energies are strong and deep within you. And they are helping you change your destiny and meet challenges powerfully. Ooh. Chives can be planted at any time in winter in tropical zones, from spring to late summer in temperate areas, and in cooler climates from mid-spring to mid-autumn. This perennial herb can be grown in pots and divided to create new plants, and then... And when they become overcrowded, plant in full sun or semi-shaded position in most soil types. Harvest is required by cutting leaves close to the base. Magical correspondences are protection from evil, calm, fear, abundance, strength, emotional balance, deities, Hecate, Kronos, and Mars. Celestial is Mars, and astrological sign is Scorpio. Divination spell. Follow these instructions to create a powerful green witch divination reading tool. Hmm. Clear an area before you have the person the reading is for. You or another person. Hold a bunch of chides. Think about the area of your life. They are... Think about the area of their life. They are seeking clarity with or the question they have. Throw some chives into the air and interpret the patterns formed when they fall. Well, that's interesting. I'd like throw them on a table or something because that way you can cook with them. And unless, I mean, I guess unless it's said something bad. But I love chives. They're delicious. I might have to try that, though. Interesting. Fun bean. Okay. The Dormouse. Maybe that, like, if you are having, like, a weird issue, like, something funky going on with, like, legal matters or something, maybe try doing that. I don't know. 28 is the number for the Dormouse. Home. The Dory Mouse card can represent your home or place where you feel the happiest and the safest. The physical body is also the home for your soul, and at times it can be reflected in this card. It can also be about family, close relationships, and childhood memories. It speaks of goals you may have had for your home, moving, renovating, and redecorating. It also encompasses yard and gardens. In order to determine what it is that you are being asked to focus on, relax for a moment and sense what comes to mind. Pay attention to your feelings. Where are they guiding you? What emotion does the card bring up? Go with the feeling and ask, what is this about? What is it I need to look at, at again and why? Perhaps to clear childhood trauma from your aura, it might be that you need to revisit the pleasant, carefree memories of your youth. If you are unhappy with your surroundings, it might be that what it, it is time for, for change of residence. Sometimes the energy of the home does not support your comfort and well-being. Sometimes the home just needs to be cleansed. It needs to be in order to be clean but also smudged or cleansed in a spiritual level. Light a smudge stick and say a prayer or sprinkle salt or water and walk slowly through the rooms. Ring chimes or bells or clap your hands or a drum in all the rooms to break up stagnant energy. If you choose, just visualize doing all these things. You can also ask that you're helping that your helping friends from other realms cleanse the house and property for you. Your physical body, the home of your soul, needs also to be kept clean and in good running order. Do things that are good for your well-being on all levels. Home is where the heart is. Chant, my home is within my heart. I carry it with me wherever I go. It is a state of peaceful being and joining with spirit. I choose to surround myself with love and light. I choose to release all that is not for my highest good. I rejoice in the pleasant memories of my past and the hopes and the desires of my present. Life is good. So be it. Have fairies over for tea today. 
I just did a video like on angels and whatnot and through my research I found that the <laughs> pseudo is the guy's name who wrote the book pseudo as in like you know the pseudo science <laughs> the pseudo religion <laughs> Um, Pseudo made a list of hierarchy angels and the, the virtues are very fey like they help you connect directly to the earth, which is very fairy energy. Um, so, um, that says to me, maybe, maybe connect with the earth with this type of gratitude and divination. And they'll probably pop up anyway. Well, probably like, like if you bring, like, what if you had like roses and chives in a little bundle in a vase on your table? That's a great way to preserve herbs, by the way. So like, even if you get them at the store, make a fresh cut, stick them in water, stick them in the refrigerator too. Um, that works really good for rosemary. And what's the other harder one? Tarragon, thyme. Things that are softer though, like basil and chives and whatnot, you can just leave out on the counter. And you keep for much longer. Okay, next ceremony. So yeah, maybe try bringing some plant life into your home. Just inviting that uh, fey energy in. This back for the pages, or there we go. Ready, set, grow. Invocation in this sacred ceremony that we have one of the greatest opportunities to experience communion with Source, one where the perceived dualities of both heaven and earth merge into an experience of the divine through the use of sacred pieces that have become in imbued with the spiritual significance we bring forth ceremony catalyzed by clear intention and preparation sacred ceremony is a prayer in action in this image a woman kneels before an altar where a number of crystals are placed light emanating from her hands we see incense burning snake spirit rests nearby and various ethereal ethereal beings appear in a wispy shroud of light around her head all the while, the tapestry upon she sits appears to be on fire, symbolizing the fiery passion brought on by the intense focus of spirit that has been invoked for this ceremony. Calling spirit forth in this way facilitates a direct heartfelt sense of relatedness to source. Whether through indifference, depression, life crisis, or any other manifestation of mental, emotional, or physical blockages, you have drifted from the intimacy with spirit for which you yearn, this, it is important to do what you can to regain an experience of spiritual power that is contained within you and all around you. Do so by conducting a ceremony, one that involves not only spirit, but also material objects you consider to be sacred. <clears throat> Set up your altar <clears throat> Excuse me. In a convenient area that is apart from your usual living space, start with representations of the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And then just add a few sacred objects. Set your intention for the ceremony, such as whether the purpose is for healing, celebration, or honoring a particular earth season or cycle. Then do an invocation to call upon the spirit guides. Breathe their presence and ask these divine beings to guide you throughout the process. Trust their guidance. Fill your heartbeat and keep breathing. Breath is the key to actual experience of spirit. That is so true. And creating a ceremony is the vehicle that supports this. So I'm going to leave you to that. I can't tell you what to do on that. If it speaks to you, go ahead and go for it. Um, if it doesn't, maybe you're just supposed to eat some more chives and get some more gratitude in your heart. Or, you know, 
Maybe you just create an altar anyway in your house to change up with the seasons and whatnot. Whatever speaks to you, go do it. Now is the time for doing and creating and staying away from fear porn and weirdos and things like that, okay? Now is the time of creation. We've got what we needed over the winter taken care of, okay? So this is time to plant the seeds moving forward. All right. This feels really good, though. This feels like really good energy. The full moon in Libra is coming up on the 5th, I believe. Look it up. But um, it's the last full moon that's not an eclipse. So if you want to not deal with the eclipse energy, which I don't mind dealing with personally, but some people don't like the eclipse energy. So if that's the case for you, definitely use this full moon to maybe do some things that you would prefer to do. Work with the energies that are already coming in for you and um, navigate that in a way that serves you, but also rides that wave of energy coming in. And again, everything's about perspective. So people will paint it. Some people paint it in this really negative, horrible light. But it's always for your greatest good. And if you can look at it from a different angle, like that it's for your greatest good, you automatically readjust what's going to happen. You automatically just readjust yourself. Instead of taking people's negative connotations as something that's like weird in scripture, you say, well, I can see how that's going to serve me and how it's going to be for my greatest good. So I'm going to take this and do it in another way that's actually more gentle, kind, and loving for myself rather than telling the universe, no, I reject your whatever it is, energy, frequency, vibration that's coming in. And then the universe is like, okay, well, I'm, this is your life path, so I'm going to have to do what I need to do to, mm-hmm. So ease that part of your suffering, Capricorn. I know you're smart. You guys do that so well. By just knowing the energies that are already coming in and riding those waves, you know, get out your surfboard, get out your wax, freaking ride it. <laughs> All right. Okay, Gappy. Have a glorious rest of your week. And until next time, keep your flame.